Watch the entire video my lovely viewers, I mean from start to finish, to get the whole thing. Without wasting much of your time, let's get right into it. Hi lovely viewers, it's me again, your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. Because and also talking exactly. about tribalism, we, I think we might be anticipating you know, a very interesting parliament or sitting uh, as soon as the uh, parliament opens because they didn't mention that uh, the laws must be or they might be stiffened going further to ensure that anybody that uh, propagate uh, or promote or instigate, uh, I mean tribalism, uh, the punishment must be, um, you know, very stiffer. I think mm. there is a very big difference between being tribal and talking about tribalism. If you've noticed, most of these people that are talking about tribalism are being charged with things like hate speech, seditious practices. There is no offense in talking about tribalism. But this administration has, is trying to criminalize talking about tribalism. What they should be doing is criminalizing tribalism. What do you mean there? Maybe okay, this is what I mean. Try to simplify it in the layman's language. If in the manner that you run mm. KBN is such that all the, pe the people that you are employing are coming from one tribe or one section, mm. we would be right to say you are practicing tribalism because you are deliberately choosing a certain class of people to be part of this organization. Now, what is happening is that in the event, what is, if I gave a KBN example, yeah. in the event that you employ, say, people, I am Honda, right? Mm. And you, I, if I owned KBN and I employed most of my staff who are Kunda. If you come up and say, you are employing Kundas, or the majority of the people that you've employed are Kundas, that is what is being criminalized. Right. What the government is trying to tell you is that, shut up. If you see it, look away. You mention it, you have committed an offense. Today, the president himself was saying, let us not allow what happened in Rwanda mm. to happen yeah. in Zambia because it began with such talk. talks. Yeah. There is a person who spoke in the same manner warning that that should not be the case. What has happened? You are being tribal. So assuming that the president was not president and he said what he said, would we expect that tomorrow you'll be appearing at the police for that particular warning that he gave? Because most of the people that are being charged with that are warning that we should not go in that direction. If we do, what is likely to happen is this and this and this and that. But what is happening is that there is a shift to try and rule by way of propaganda. And if you have a government that insists more on propaganda than on actual and factual issues, then you have a problem. The issue of JJ is propaganda, that is, it is being veiled in propaganda. When issues are coming out, the government is downplaying them and amplifying the fact that, no, this person is supposedly a thug. This person supposedly did this. They should go ahead and set their facts right. If you are saying that this person did this, this person is a member of parliament. How is it that he has made it to be a member of parliament? What happened to those, off uh, those offenses that he's accused of having committed in the past? If they were diligent enough, they would come to a conclusion that he is not everything that they've said he is. 
but the very fact that he's close to President ECL, then they have a problem. Because it appears as though everyone who comes close to ECL is being a victim of this government. It means that the police will call them the very next day. And that is not fair. That is not the manner in which we ought to be handling national affairs. The president should rise above all these things and be able to put the country first. Not everything to be circling around himself. It appears to me that even when he's talking, he talks as though he's the most intelligent person in the room. Look at uh, what he said, and wants Zambians to believe. He said, I was put on death row. What death row was he put in? President Haka Indechilema has never been on death row. Those who are on death row, at least was uh, the time... Let's define what death row is. It means that you have been convicted and sentenced to hang. You've been sentenced to death. President Haka Indechilema has never been sentenced to death for him to be awaiting to be executed as by law established. That has never happened. So to authoritatively say that I was put on death row is a lie. So to simply come up and say such a lie with a straight face is problematic for a person who is president. It's for that reason that I still insist that this president must be scripted at all times. He must be able to read things that have been fact-checked. And you should be able to do that. You can't even make a, re a reckless statement to say, if the police can do this, then I will get the army to do You can't unleash the army on your citizens because the functions of the army are known. The reason it's established is to protect the sovereignty of the country, the territorial sovereignty of the country. And also, if there's national emergencies, then they can be enlisted to try and help in the national emergencies. I would agree with him on one condition. Mm. Graform Samba is a national emergency. Maybe that's the only reason it should enlist the army. It's a national emergency because he has been reckless in the manner that he's dealt with the opposition. It's a national emergency because he himself has said that the ruling party is violent. They are likely to attack the opposition if in the event that are allowed a rally. He has said quite a lot of outrageous things. You are just adding more salt now to the, the wound because earlier on you, you issued a very strong statement there by describing Graham Samba as an incompetent, you know, IG. Yes, it Again, is incompetent. You're coming back and you're saying IG is a national disaster today. A national emergency. What are is, you going maybe to withdraw some no, of the strong ways? No, no, no. I can't withdraw. Listen, isn't it Graham Samba who said that he isn't allowing rallies because the other side may attack the opposition? Isn't he, was, it? he was quoted. He yes. was quoted. Yeah. He was quoted as having said that. Yeah. What does that say about his competence? You tell me. You are here. Exactly. And what I'm telling you is that he's incompetent. So that extent of incompetence, where you will see cadres from the UPND carrying out that procession, insulting uh, the former president, and you do nothing about it. We had a case recently where our brother Amos Chanda was taken to court and convicted for use of insulting language. What were the police doing when those guys were insulting? They were just watching. They were just watching. Mm. And yet, if it is the other way around, they move in with haste. Just people going to Ibex police to say, give us answers. What is going on over the issue of JJ? Those people were tear gassed. People who were not violent at all. People were not using insulting language. People who only wanted answers. The last one week has been very interesting. We had uh, Mrs. Uh, Nawakwi mm -hmm. remanded at Chelston. The effect of Madame Nawakwi being remanded at Chelston was that the gate at Chelston police was always closed with a police officer manning the gate scrutinizing each and every person that is going to the police station, a public place which is open to any member of the public. I went to see Munir at Central Police. I found the gates closed and manned by the police, and the police had the guards to ask me what I was there for. 
Each and every person entering the police station is being asked what they were there for. Is that what should happen at a police station, a public place? The last two days, if you went to court, the gates at the magistrate's complex were closed, being manned by the police, asking each and every person entering that premises what they were going to do. Today, they even had a list of persons that uh, were to be allowed to, 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 to drive through that, that, that road that leads to the magistrate's court. Even asking what your name is, do you have an ID? Is that what we have come to? This state has become a police state. And all those things are things that should have been addressed. Is there something that is going on? To the contrary, uh, President Agandeshema strongly believe um, that the country is far much better than it was today. He did actually even give um, an emphasis that the periodic front had run down this economy see, and the country in general. There was no order whatsoever. See, the, the, the problem is when you tell a lie so much that you yourself begin to believe in it, you want to say it so much thinking that people are gullible enough to believe your lie. That is where the problem is. To say, you see, the, the over-exaggerate this issue of what used to happen during the time of PF. To say every day people, there was bloodshed, people were being killed. People, listen, if there was such a thing, that was probably going to be the first thing he was going to do. Because his attitude and everything shows that this is a person who is thirsty for revenge. He says the opposite, but the acts or what it does shows that this is a person that is thirsty for revenge. This is a person that is thirsty, and they exaggerate things. The only thing they'll, they'll talk about is, no, these people used to beat you. These people used to kill you. People were being killed every day. He mentioned that he was arrested 15 times. Yes, he or was. Something yes, he was. He was arrested yeah. uh, 15 times. Mm -hmm. If I thought he was arrested 15 times, ask him what happened those 15 times. He's not saying what happened those 15 times. He was arrested. That issue in Mongo that happened, perhaps charging him with treason, uh, may have been overstated as it were. But what he did, every Zambian, including himself, agrees that that was a wrong move. If that was done to President Haka Inde Chilema today, if President uh, uh, Edgar Chagualungu dared to do that to President uh, Hichilema, it would be a different story altogether. What would have expected is him to put it in this context. What I did in Mongo was not correct. But perhaps the severity of the charge I was given may have been too much. much. Maybe I should have been given a traffic offense. And the state would probably answer and say, listen, you endangered the life of a president. And the law is that every time you hear a beacon or there's, there's a beacon or a siren of an ambulance or a presidential motorcade, you give way. Did he give way? No, he did not give way. He should be man enough to be able to accept that there was wrong on his part. But he shifts all the blame to the, to, the, to the other side. As though he was just seated drinking tea and someone came and said, you, you are being arrested. Everything should be put in the rightful context because people are not gullible to simply believe that uh, PF was bad. But now people are comparing. Okay, listen, there is this bad that you say used to exist. What have your cadres done? This is what they have done. This is not right. This is not good. It shouldn't be the case. But what does he do? He downplays that. He makes it about himself. Those people, though they support you, the conduct that they've exhibited is an illegality. Let the police deal with it. Not at your instruction, but because they have done something wrong. The court processes should not go on with this issue of five months at the instruction of the president, but because it's expedient that it should be so. And to be the one to dictate what should happen, because now he says, police, deal with that matter. Now I'm setting up a commission of inquiry. Uh, Chief Justice uh, set up the uh, uh, Economic and Financial Crimes Court, and everything is happening in that manner. 
I think the president should have been properly oriented, that your power only goes so far. There are certain things that you can't do. Because the, the moment there's a presidential pronouncement over a particular thing, mm. people listen to what he says. He has found a lot of people guilty merely by talking about them. And these are people who are going to appear in court. And these are people where the police have to investigate. And the police, whether they have evidence or not, have ended up simply arresting people mm. and taking them to court to say, well, let the courts be the ones to discharge this. I don't want to lose my job. Because the president thinks that they are guilty, therefore they are guilty. Let us look at the pronouncements, uh, Council Zulu, uh, in which the president, I, I remember very well when he came into office, I think he did express concern that We've seen that cases are prolonging, you know, are taking too long in these, uh, you know, corridors of the judiciary. So we need to ensure that we quickly come up with mechanisms or uh, possibly measures of ensuring that the cases are quickly uh, expedited. Because remember, you lawyers, you tell us, and also that's what the president has been talking about, who has been concerned, that justice delayed is justice denied. And, just Therefore, and justice hurried mm. is justice denied. So, so he to comes be, in now to set up, to for example, the, uh, the court, uh, the crimes, uh, 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 crimes court, uh, so that a fast track uh, crimes court, whatever how we call it, in order to have these cases be dealt with as soon as possible. But again, you are here, you are still complaining. See, the Which issue, the is, issue is this. What was the measure mm. of coming up with five months? What were the considerations that you would deal with the case effectively mm. in five months and conclude. Mm. The only reason the president is interested in these cases taking five months is because he has an interest in those cases. He has an interest in those cases because what according to him, he has already found these people guilty. In not one occasion, mm. he <coughs> refers to most of the people to say, no, they were stealing. So as far as this concerned, they were stealing. He comments on matters that are active in court. He comments, passes verdicts over these people. And it is not about whether it is feasible or not. It is about when he wants to have answers as regards the guilt of the people that are going there. There are examples abound of cases that have gone to court on evidence that is just not there where an officer comes to court and says, okay, there is this issue. I'll give you an example of uh, the case of Given Lubinda. Well, Given Lubinda gets a loan from, from this person. They even execute an agreement. The investigating officer checks the, the agreement, confirms that there's a loan, asks the other person what happened in this transaction. The other person confirms and says, I got loan. But when this officer comes and says, I didn't believe him, okay, what about the person from whom the loan was gotten from? Ah, I didn't believe him. Then the person is acquitted. So with that, you have people going to court where there's little or no evidence, but for purposes of persecution. And the president was right when he said, we shall persecute and prosecute you. But the role of the state is never to persecute. You prosecute based on available evidence. If there is no evidence, you simply say, there is no evidence to prosecute. And that enhances professionalism in the police, professionalism in the National Prosecutions Authority. But all these things are becoming uh, extinct. Professionalism is becoming extinct in the police extinct in the National Prosecutions Authority because they have to work on instruction. And the greatest asset that a lawyer and a police officer have is their judgment. The moment you lose your judgment, you should stop being a police officer. Uh, how you possible, stop can, being how possible that these matters um, can be you know, dealt with within a period of six months I bring in this question because we've seen some concerns. You know, um, we've covered these stories where people tell you that it's not possible because some of the judges or the magistrates, they are overwhelmed with cases, for example. Vis-a-vis, uh, -vis we talk about the conditions of service of some uh, you know, uh, uh, people in the judiciary. We've had these lamentations coming from uh, State Council John Sangwa as well, who's been advocating to ensure that 
the people in the judiciary are well taken care of in terms of uh, the conditions of service. See, the, the issue so of putting all these pieces together, how possible that these matters can be dealt with within six months? Okay. Let's, let, let's put it in this context. Mm. The issue of conditions of service, yeah. let's put it aside. Right. Let's look at the efficiency of the system. Mm. You have told the judiciary that prioritize these matters. Mm. We have made you the Economic and Financial Crimes Court. Prioritize these matters. And in prioritizing those matters, you've even gone to the extent of saying, deal with them in five months. Now, each case is different. The evidence is different. There is documentary evidence that has to be gone through. Okay? There are witnesses who are pretty much long. You cannot decide how long a witness should be on the stand. Because their story may be long. Even if their story may be short, you cannot decide how long the cross-examination could be. There are people that have been on the stand for cross-examination for days on end, months on end, because there are issues to be dealt with. But to give a timeline to say it should be done in this may result in an injustice being occasioned. Because the issue is that if the concentration will be on the time and not the process, we'll have a problem. What delayed most matters in the subordinate court is that the subordinate uh, court had been designated as a place where trial is by ambush. You, the accused person, as you are going to court, you don't know what evidence is going to be presented. The good thing is that now you are made to know what evidence is going to be presented in this Economic and Financial Crimes Court. But even when you have that, you must, the Constitution says you must be given enough time and facilities for dealing with your matter, mm -hmm. for putting up your defense. How much is that time? That is based on a case-by-case -case basis. Mm. And it should not be you have five months. And then after five months, you have to report why you have not concluded. You can't give a magistrate or a judge uh, the issue to say, you explain why you didn't conclude this matter in this time. And the magistrate should be, shouldn't be put under pressure to say, if I don't finish this matter in five months, then I'll have to report uh, why I did not finish. Where is the judicial independence that is guaranteed by the Constitution. Because every magistrate, every judicial officer, every judge must have judicial independence to deal with the matter correctly mm. in the manner that that judge or magistrate deems fit. If you limit them in the, or you want to regulate the time frame and the manner in which they they are to deal with those, uh, with those issues. It may result in an injustice. There he is. Himself, he cries over the 14 days. Now, we have to sit down to say, are we serious when we say we have to deal with this matter in 14 days? Are we serious when we say we're going to deal with this matter in, in, uh, in, in, in five months? What is reasonable on a case-by-case -case basis? We have to look at at all that, mm. and not an imposition, especially if it comes from a pronouncement from the executive, then the judiciary implements. Then we have a problem. The independence of these wings of government should be seen. But this time the lines are blurry. The legislature, the judiciary, and the executive, you do not necessarily see what the difference is. It's like what the executive wants is what certainly goes in these wings of, uh, of, of government. Mm. And that should not be the case. So basically, you don't see, I mean, um, this wish by the president to have these matters be dealt with within six months, you, you don't see it being possible or being feasible? What I see is that it will result in more injustices than justice being done. It should not be a pronouncement 
by the president. See, all these things that are going on right now, all this tension, all these uh, things put together are like COVID. See, when we had COVID, if you were not affected, it was something that was happening to other people. But sooner or later, everybody will be getting affected. Everybody will be getting affected. So far, the church has been affected because of the misrule that is going there, because of the heavy-handedness that is going there. He was talking about the CSOs, don't hide behind the church, don't hide behind this, mm. these things. It's because they know what they've done to the church. They know what they've done to the CSOs. They know what they've done to different uh, uh, people or, or, or the pressure that they're exerting. Mm. People are now afraid to talk. Innocent, we have people that would rather talk on WhatsApp than on a straight call. Because they're afraid. I get calls where people are saying, ah, let's go to the other side. Let's talk on WhatsApp. Because they're afraid that their rights have been clamped on. They can't <laughs> freely express themselves. Is that the country that we want to live in? An offense is not that which I do not agree with. The president should have a big heart, a big mind to contain things that are spoken, even against him. <clears throat> to suggest that anything that you do not like, because you have said something that I don't like, that's hate speech. Because you've said something that's, that I don't like, that's a dishes practice. Because you've said something that I don't like, that, that is uh, libel or, or, or anything of that sort. Yeah. So most people are being prosecuted because the executive, the government, doesn't like what they said. But the president should rise above and be able to protect your right to say what you want to say without necessarily agreeing with you. Let me get an update. I know that last week you, I mean, you had a very busy day at the Drug Enforcement Commission yes. um, representing your clients. That's the family of the former president, Dr. Yes. Edgar Shagwalungu. Tell us, what are the updates in that regard? What, um, how was the, 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 the issue, apart from the, the, the noise from the cadres that we, we, we covered? See, that, that's, that's also an interesting issue, and that is why I'm saying that um, we err when we decide to politicize everything. The president repeated it today. When, remember when uh, he went for that launch of the national... Uh, and corruption uh, yeah. policy mm -hmm. document. They said, now people should not just lose the property. They should also go to jail. Something which he repeated today. To say, no, it is not just about losing the property. You will also go to jail. Mm. Now, with that instruction, Deck picks it up. Deck ordinarily ought to be independent. Anti-Corruption Commission ordinarily ought to be independent. This is DJ Mutati exclusive. Alright, that's all right for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutati Mpondum. I love you, peace. I gotta go.